I'm Michael Drives, and this is the 2024 Subaru Solterra Touring in Elemental Red Pearl. Solterra is Subaru's first mass market EV, and the name Solterra comes from the Latin word sol for sun and terra for earth. Now, every Subaru Solterra comes with Star Drive, and Star Drive is Subaru's name for its electric, symmetrical, all wheel drive powertrain. And every Subaru Solterra also comes with EyeSight. Solterra was introduced for the 2023 model year, but this 2024 brings some improvements, including faster DC fast charging, which has better battery conditioning, and this is especially useful in the cold weather or noticeable. And it has a new steering wheel with paddles to adjust the regen. Also new for 2024 is driver focus mitigation and front cross traffic alert on the Solterra. Solterra comes in three trims, starting with premium at $44,995, and then you can step up to the limited trim and then the touring trim. And the touring trim is what we have here, and that starts with an MSRP of $51,995 before destination. All together, this Solterra is just a little bit over $54,000 because it includes one option, and that's this elemental red pearl paint, which sets you back $890. You include destination and delivery on top of that, and you're looking at a $54,000 car. Let's talk about the range, charging speed, and efficiency of the Solterra. The EPA estimates the range for the Solterra to be 222 miles. As far as fast charging, you can level three charge the Solterra from 10 to 80% in about 35 minutes. As far as level two charging, it's gonna take about nine and a half hours to charge from when that low battery light comes on until a full charge when you're on your home level two charger. Subaru actually estimates when you're charging at home that a fill up for that 222 miles is gonna be about nine to $10, depending on the cost of your electricity. So compare that to a 40, 50 or $60 fill up for an equivalent gasoline powered car, and you can really realize those savings. Solterra in this touring trim comes in at 102 miles per gallon combined. That's better than a Ford Mustang Mach-E in its all-wheel drive trim, but actually a bit lower than the Tesla Model Y. Let's take a look at the exterior design. Now here you've got LED headlights up front, and you actually have 8.3 inches of ground clearance, and that's pretty much class leading for this type of crossover SUV. One of the nice features you have is these black painted bumpers, and that's actually purposeful because if you're riding through a lot of brush, um, driving off road and gets getting hit by some small rocks and whatnot, that's not gonna scrape paint off of those plastic parts because there is no paint. So it's gonna wear much better than would a painted plastic piece. Stepping over to the side of Solterra, you have 20 inch wheels in this touring trim. And then you come over to the side and all Solterras have heated mirrors, but the touring trim has integrated turn signals and power folding mirrors. And you'll also notice that there are roof rails on top. So all trims in 2024 have these built-in roof rails and they'll hold 700 pounds of static weight. Taking a closer look at the charging port, it's nicely located right outside of the driver's door or forward of it. And you open that up and you've got two connectors of here, well, one CCS combo. If you're just gonna level one or level two charge, you would plug your connector in there. And this is nicely hinged, so there's nothing to dangle and fall out and remove. And then if you're going to level three DC fast charge, you would pop that second little door open, and then you can plug the whole connector into there. Um, these little flaps keep it nicely sealed so that it keeps dust and water and liquids out of there. And then there is a charge indicator here. If it were charging, this would be flashing, and we can just give that a little close. This will lock with the rest of the car. You'll notice looking down the side of the car that that theme of unpainted plastic continues over the wheel well arches where you have kind of this C clamp over these, and then it continues to the back bumper, which is gonna have unpainted plastic down here on this part over the bumper cover. Um, behind the roof rails, you'll notice a large spoiler. This car does not have a rear windshield wiper. So Subaru's intention was that the spoiler will keep the rain off the back window when you're driving. However, that doesn't really apply to when you're in stop and go traffic. There's no way to automatically wipe the rear window from the inside of the car. Let's take a look at the cargo area. Welcome to the rear of the Subaru Solterra. You'll notice there's quite a bit of badging back here. Uh, just to, to define this, what we see here, we've got Subaru and then we have symmetrical all wheel drive down under that. And then of course you have the name of the vehicle, the Solterra and the trim touring and EV, and you'll notice there are multiple EV badges around this car, 
on both sides, one on the charging port and one over here just on the sheet metal, and then one on the back to let everybody know that you bought an EV. Now, to open the rear hatch, we're just gonna find the little button under here. That's power lift gate on the touring trim. And once you get inside here, you'll notice there is an integrated cargo cover. Now this is standard on the touring trim, but it's also an option on the premium and limited trims. Uh, very nicely retractable, so I can put that in there. And then you'll notice a pretty large cargo area and with the seats folded down, you would just flip this little lever there, give it a shove, and you have a ton of room and those fold almost flat on the front there. And then down in here, you've got some hooks, small hooks to hang something like a small grocery sack there. And then you have a larger sort of loop where you can connect a cargo net if you needed to. And then under here, you've just got a little bit more storage and that's enough in here to hold, say your level one charging cable, which does come standard with the Solterra. It's not an extra charge, which is nice. Um, so I'm going to pull this cargo cover back closed here, and then we will take a look at the inside. Welcome to the interior of the 2024 Solterra. Because this is the touring trim, you have a Harman Kardon audio system, which has 11 speakers, and that includes a subwoofer, and it has over 576 watts of power. You'll also notice that this touring trim has a glass moonroof, and this glass roof covers the front and the back of the car and has a power retractable shade that's operated up here. However, it does not open, but it does provide a lot of light and really brightens up the interior for your passengers. This touring trim does come with LED interior illumination, which is very nice, and that sort of adds a little bit of luxury to the vehicle. Now let's hop in the driver's seat and see what it looks like from there. Now that we're in the driver's seat of the Solterra, I want to power on the car, and I'm just going to do that by pressing the button down here. Now that we're in the driver's seat of the Solterra, I want to power on the car, and I'm just going to do that by pressing the button down here, and you'll see the gauge animation and display kick in. Let me put my foot on the brake and try that again. There we go. That did it. And so you see this new steering wheel that's new for 2024 and it has shifters on the back. You'll see a negative on this one and a positive down on this one that adjusts the regen. And you'll see that, that display is very high up where a head up display would almost sit on the windshield. However, it's very nicely placed and I like that it's high mounted. Um, you'll notice that if I come down here and I press this button with the pages, I can scooch that extra information out of the way and then you just have your basic. But I will say that it is very busy and there are a lot of small fonts that you can see. So it's kind of like, it's hard to tell the hierarchy of information and what's really important because everything is about the same size and there's a lot going on. Uh, one of the things I do like about this though is that you'll see those little red dashes under here light up. That's when my foot is on the brake. Now if I'm just, I have a regen on and I'm driving along and I'm not hitting the brake but I let off the accelerator quickly and the car is going to slow down a lot, that's actually going to light those up and the little red dashes will come on meaning that the brake lights are on. That's just what that indicator means. Um, you can see over here you have your range and your battery percentage. And I will note that this car has three drive modes. So you can come down here and you can choose between regular or normal, eco and power. And that won't actually change the range that you see there next to the uh, where it says 138 miles. However, if I do turn off the AC or the climate control and just turn that fully off, you'll now see that that jumps to 144 and that little fan symbol goes away. If I hit the auto button on the HVAC again, then that fan symbol reappears and it'll show a slightly lower miles. What's interesting is that changing the drive mode does not affect that at all. So if I change the drive mode from power to eco or just normal, it doesn't affect the range at least on there. Of course, theoretically, it totally does affect the range, um, but it just does not display there, only changing that climate control. Um, coming down here to the steering wheel, you have your normal ACC automatic cruise control controls and your audio controls. And then there is a little interesting thing here, and this is the sort of driver attention system that if you start looking to the left or looking to the right um, and not paying attention, an alert's gonna come on the 
this gauge cluster up there and it's gonna let you know that you're not paying attention and you may want to look ahead and that's for the safety of yourself and your passengers. Coming down here, you can see a very large display. This has a 12.3 inch display. All trims of the Solterra have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And this higher end trim also has a wireless Qi charger built in down there. Now, for safety reasons, it is under a little cover. So you put your phone in there and it connects to Apple CarPlay wirelessly and you're all set. And there's a USB-A charging port if you have an old school charging connector. However, for those with faster charging needs, down here below the center console, you can see a USB-C charging port as well as a 12 volt accessory. And there is another USB-C charging port on the passenger side just under there, uh, mirrored on the same side. Coming back up here, all of your climate controls are easily accessible through this sort of touch capacitive screen um, at all times. So they're not locked into the main screen um, if I wanted to get back to Subaru's native system, I would just hit this button and then that is going to show the maps and all of Subaru's controls. If I want to jump back into CarPlay, I would just hit this button up here. It's pretty reactive, so if I wanted to switch over to music, that's just going to come up quickly and it's going to play your music. Coming back to the main CarPlay screen, we can just leave that up there. It just really shows the size of that, that screen and how easy it is to reach. Coming down here, to the center of the center console, or the top of it, I should say, you've got some interesting buttons. So right here, you have what Subaru calls the S pedal. Now this is somewhat like one pedal driving, but it won't bring you all the way to a stop. Um, you can control most of the car's acceleration and deceleration with your accelerator pedal, but when you slow down to get to maybe five miles per hour, you're gonna actually have to switch your foot over and apply the brake because it will not bring the car to a stop. You've got your electronic parking release and then your brake hold, which will hold the car on a hill and keep you from rolling back. Over here, those drive modes, eco, normal, and power are selectable there. And then you have this surround view monitor, which I'll show you in a second. You have park assist, which will guide you into a parallel parking spot. Of course, you can turn traction control off. And then all Solteras have X mode. And that X mode can switch between dirt and snow. That's one of the options. And I'll hit this button again. And it can switch over to deep snow and mud. And then we can turn that off. And it'll also hold you like a hill descent going down a hill and whatnot. So over here, hitting this surround view, which does have on this touring trim, you can see it gives a 360 degree view of the exterior of the car. And it shows all of those parking lines and it shows you kind of a bird's eye view of what you're looking at there. That's super cool. I could play that again and have it redo the animation if I wanted to. Uh, I can also hit that button and just have it in a different view so you can see where you are parked and where you're located. And that'll keep you from going over the line. It's just an assist to aid in parking. And it'll also keep you from possibly hitting any pillars in a parking garage. Further down the center console, we've got two cup holders. And then under here, of course, that storage and that removable storage bin that you can take out. It's very nice. Welcome to the back seat of the 2024 Subaru Solterra. You'll notice right off the bat here, you'll see that there are two more USB-C charging port for your, ports for your passengers. Uh, super handy to keep their devices charged and keep them busy. You'll also notice that there is a whole bit of leg room here. And I'm five foot nine. I've got plenty of room, even with this glass roof with the retractable shade. And then there's plenty of leg room. This seat is fairly far back. It's past the B pillar um, for this seat back. And I've got a lot of room. So if I were to buckle up here, I'd be really comfortable. In addition to the charging ports down here, you'll notice there are climate control vents for the air to come back to your passengers, as well as heated seat control buttons. So I can have heated seats on in the front and those front seats are actually heated and cooled in this touring trim. And then the rear seats have the option of having heat. Then of course, for your rear passengers, you have your center armrest here with cup holders. And there's a handy little tray here that will hold a smartphone or a tablet or something else that you wanna store in there. So nice that those armrests are there. And then you have, of course, adjustable headrests and LED lighting, and then you've got your grab handles. And these have little hooks in here too, if you wanna hang some hanging clothes. 
One final benefit that you probably can't see in this view is that there is a flat floor in the rear here, and that's because this is an all-electric vehicle and you don't have a drive shaft coming through the middle of the car. So that just gives your passengers a little bit more foot room or leg room down here, especially if you have that fifth passenger in the center of the back seat. They'll have a place to put their legs down flat. Now let's hop back in the driver's seat and go for a drive. Welcome to the drive portion. I'm going to turn on the car right now, and then I'm gonna run it through a little test. I'm gonna ask it to navigate to a particular destination. So I will let the car start up, let the logo come off the center screen here as it comes into drive, and then I'm going to hit continue and agree, and then I'm gonna use my voice control to say, navigate to the White House. I found two results. The first is the White House at Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest. Just like, like that, and it's super quick, and I'm just gonna bypass that, hit the White House, and it's gonna navigate to the White House, so super easy. All right, now that the nav's in, off we go. You can tell it's super quiet. In fact, if I turn off the HVAC, you probably can't hear a single thing. That's because this car is so quiet. It is a little chilly this morning, so I'm gonna turn that HVAC back on. Um, I do have the power moonroof open. I guess I'd call it a glass roof because uh, it does not open. And that's just providing some really nice light in here. And I'm gonna head on out. I'm in normal mode and I'm running over some rough pavement right now. And really the car absorbs it well. It's just very sure-footed and solid feeling. And I do like that. The brakes work extremely well. There's no kind of EV wonkiness that you may experience with other vehicles. And if I wanna hammer it and get on the accelerator here, it's really gonna take off and not in a scary way or an uncontrolled way. It's just gonna really kick some butt. So if you're used to an internal combustion car, you're in for a very nice surprise. Now, the zero to 60 time in the Solterra EV in this touring trim is about six seconds according to Motor Trend. So it's nothing you know, crazy outlandish, but it is very fast and compared to you know, most cars out there, it's you know, sports car territory for what was 20 years ago. Going over terrible pavement, how about to hit it right now? So you can tell there's no rattles or squeaks in the car. It's just very solid feeling and very comfortable. And it's that feel that you're used to if you are used to driving a Subaru. If I were to look away and not pay attention to the road, which I really don't want to do, the driver mitigation system will tell me, hey, keep your eyes on the road and it's gonna have a strong beep to it and let me know that I should keep my eyes on the road. Another one of the nice things about this gauge cluster behind the steering wheel, although it is a little bit small, is it does tell you not only the speed limit signs, but it tells you if there is a stop sign coming up or if you may not make a left turn at a certain intersection, it's gonna tell you there as well. Big old pothole. and wasn't too bad in here, even with the 20 inch wheels. So if you're looking at a vehicle with the smaller wheels and maybe the premium trim, you're really going to have a smooth ride. One thing I especially love about driving the Solterra is that the visibility outside of the front seat, the driver's seat, is excellent. So these A-pillars are pretty thin and you've got this extra little piece of glass window in front of the mirror so you can really see down if there's a child you know picking up a, a ball or something or, or maybe someone pushing a stroller or someone walking a dog it's easy to see that you could miss that in other vehicles but it's nice that this just has a really expansive greenhouse in it and it's really easy to see and then of course you have front and rear cross traffic alert in here in case you're backing out somewhere where you you know may be impeded by what is um, parked there on the the corner or wherever you're trying to maneuver out of so i am in some very narrow crowded streets and it was just super easy to drive and navigate one thing that's a little funky i know this is a new steering wheel for 2024 and it's almost or a rectangular shape is a little bit odd and it takes a little bit getting used to. I'm not sure that I'm a huge fan of it. Like, I don't know what was wrong with a normal round steering wheel, 
but I get that maybe the top had to be a little bit flatter so that you could better see the gauge cluster that is mounted above. While it feels nice and small to maneuver in the city and it's very easy, there's actually a ton of room in that back seat. So your passengers are never going to pay any type of penalty for being a smaller SUV. There's actually, it's super roomy inside and the seats are very comfortable. I noticed after a while of driving uh, that it did feel a little bit flat, but I turned on the heated seat and that sort of relaxed me and my seat muscles a little bit and did feel uh, quite a bit better. So use those heated seats. And again, in this touring trim, you will get cooled or ventilated seats as well. And we're gonna launch here and uh, just really get up and go. So that zero to 60 in six seconds, that's zero to 60, that zero to 15 and that zero to 30 is just like that such a joy to drive in the city when you really need to get up and go out of a spot to maybe get in merge into traffic and whatnot so i think it's really going to put a smile on your face and i'm not even in the power mode or the sport mode i think they call it power um, i'm just in the regular normal driving mode and there's still just gobs of power to be had especially from a stop as far as horsepower, I believe it's a little bit about 215 horsepower, but don't let that low number uh, dissuade you. Uh, it's quite a bit of torque, at about 250 foot-pounds or 249 foot-pounds of pound-feet of torque, and it really is gonna get up and go. That concludes our short drive portion. Let's hop out and we'll talk about safety ratings, and then my we'll share my fabulous favorites and not so favorites about the 2024 Solterra. Welcome back. I wanted to talk quickly about safety ratings. NHTSA has rated the Solterra for 2024 as a five star overall, and that's as many stars as you can have. And then IIHS rates the Solterra a top safety pick. And now it's time for my fabulous favorites and not so favorites about the 2024 Solterra. Fabulous favorite number one, that sure-footed solid drive. Another fabulous favorite, eyesight is standard on every trim. So you'll have the very latest EyeSight driver assistance features, including front and rear cross-traffic alert. Another fabulous favorite, Solterra comes with what Subaru calls Subaru Just Drive, and that's 10 days of rental from your Subaru dealership. Should you need to go somewhere off-grid, you can actually rent a Subaru, and that's included 10 days worth in the purchase or lease of a Solterra EV. My final fabulous favorite, you may know that this is a twin car to the Toyota BZ4X, but it's actually a better value when you look at the starting price of the all-wheel drive and how it's equipped. Subaru actually has the edge on the value. And my not-so-favorites about the Solterra. That slow level 3 charging speed. While it's improved for 2024, it's still limited at 100 kilowatts. So if you pull up to 150 station, 250 station, 350 station, you're still only going to be able to charge at a max of 100 kilowatts. And more the standard for mid to long range EVs is 150, 200, and sometimes even 250 and above kilowatts of charging speed. Even that level two charging speed is a little bit slower than the competition. One more not so favorite, that really busy gauge cluster behind the steering wheel. It's such a great opportunity. It's in such a great spot to just have some big, bold, crisp graphics in there. It's like Subaru tried to include everything in the kitchen sink in that little cluster, and it just ends up being really busy and you kind of have to squint because it is a little bit further away than a normal gauge cluster as to what you're looking at and what it's trying to tell you. And my final not so favorite is that high price. That brings us to the end of the review. If you like this video, please just hit that like button in there. Better yet, if you subscribe, you'll be notified when I do new vehicle reviews of EVs and plug-in hybrids. And if you have any thoughts or comments about the Solterra, please put those in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you have to say about the vehicle. Thank you again, have a nice day, drive safely, and don't forget to smile.